Hello everyone and welcome to another casual review. Today I'm talking about Luigi's Mansion 3. What better way of wrapping up the spooked series for the year than ending with Luigi's Mansion 3. I have had this game since Black Friday in 2020 and I knew I wanted to play it during Halloween time so I've been holding on to it for about 11 months now and I am so excited to have finally beaten this game. As for the plot itself, Luigi gets invited to stay at a luxury hotel and he is invited to bring all of his friends with him. This hotel is owned by a very luxurious woman by the name of Helen Gravely. You can kind of see where this plot is going. Turns out that it was all a trap and the Helen Gravely is actually a ghost and this whole hotel is run by ghosts. So they captured all of Luigi's friends while he was asleep. Now it is his job to rescue all of his friends from the the paintings that they are trapped in. You know, as far as Nintendo plots goes, this is basically as complex as they get, but I thought it was a fun plot just the same, especially for this Halloween season. As far as the voice acting goes, it's all done by Charles Martinet, and they all say very simple things, like Mario says, let's go, and Luigi, he's just a Mario, and he's all scared. I'm very disappointed to say that Luigi is not voiced by Charlie Day, like how he will be in the movie. I can just picture Charlie from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, his character just like there's freaking ghosts everywhere and they captured up all my friends and i'm freaking out man i I'm, I'm sorry that was such an awful impersonation i will be done with this charlie day impersonation forever don't worry about it seriously though luigi is terrified poor luigi he is tasked with this impossible task of rescuing his friends and he is just constantly shaking in his boots he can't even hold his flashlight straight he's just constantly shivering this guy is terrified of every single thing and it is actually pretty humorous but I, I do feel bad for the guy you know when you're playing as Mario Mario's just all all happy-go-lucky let's -a go and jumping around everywhere he's never afraid of even freaking Bowser but Luigi this guy is is just shaking in his boots and you got to feel bad for him as far as my previous experiences with Luigi games I've never finished any Luigi Mansion games before I know at one time growing up we owned the first Luigi's Mansion I'm not sure where that ended up but I never uh, finished that. I never put like more than an hour into that game. I think that probably ended up with my older brother. Maybe I should see if I could borrow it from him so I can try it out or get the 3DS version. Now I do actually own Luigi's Mansion 2 Dark Moon and that's another one that I just dropped off. I couldn't get hooked onto the Luigi's Mansion games and I've always been kind of confused because everyone who has played Luigi's Mansion just loves it. They, they champion it and I just can't seem to really get into it you know even this one it just never really seemed to grasp me in the way that I kind of wish that it would you know everyone's just saying how fun they are and uh, we'll, we'll get into all of it so the the meat of the game is you are walking around this hotel and you are interacting with objects and you are vacuuming up stuff and you are collecting money and you are just trying to get these buttons that work with the elevator in order for you to get to taller floors in this hotel. Now the controls themselves take some getting used to. It's kind of like tank controls where if you are holding left then it's Luigi's left not the camera's left if that makes any sense. And then vacuuming uh, vertically up and down it, it just takes some weird uh, uh, configuration here. This is the first time ever that I've actually utilized the gyroscope in the Nintendo Switch where I would use the right analog stick to vacuum left and right but then I would tilt the actual switch itself up and down to uh, vertically vacuum up in those directions. Definitely recommend using the gyro aiming if you are playing this game. Um, as far as Luigi's movement goes, it's very similar to Captain Toad if you ever played like that. He can only just walk around very slowly. He can't climb. He can't jump. And sometimes it is kind of frustrating because like it'll just be this tiny little ledge and up you have to uh, navigate up up this ledge and it's just like come on Luigi just climb up that ledge you can totally do it it's just a little bit or like you just want Luigi to like crouch and crawl underneath an object but he won't he just stands and walks and it's just like ah come come on Luigi I've played 2d platformer games where you can jump just as high as Mario what's your problem but I guess that's just how, like the whole how the whole gameplay of this game goes is you're you're meant to, to more puzzle it out and figure out how do you get up on that 
that small little ledge without jumping. When you are vacuuming objects up, it's fun to just go into a new room and just destroy the, the hotel room. Uh, you can pretty much suck up almost anything and actually forgot that the Nintendo Switch has uh, HD rumble in it because I played a majority of my Switch gaming on the Switch Lite but now that I have the Switch OLED it does have vibration so it's kind of fun to feel that HD vibration as you're sucking up objects with your vacuum. It is a super high powered vacuum by the way and in your controllers you just hear this you just feel this little suck up vibration. I can't really describe it but it just sounds like and it just like, I don't know, I can't describe it. it. It feels like you are vacuuming up objects, which is very fun. It's fun to just go into a room and destroy stuff, vacuum up everything that you possibly can. As you are exploring all of these rooms in this hotel, you are encounter a large variety of ghosts because you are vacuuming up these ghosts, Ghostbusters style. Now, as far as the generic ghosts go, I think there's maybe only like four different types and they all have different uh, actions. Like there's the big red ones that are super strong. Um, there's a sneaky ones that like to sneak behind you the generic blue guys you know and there's uh you have to use a variety of tools in order to suck up these ghosts like let's say uh some of the blue guys will have like a shield so you are equipped with this plunger shot and you shoot it at an object and then you can suck up the rope and that's luigi's way of kind of like pulling an object so you can utilize this plunger during combat and uh during your puzzle solving um you also have this new little jump thing Thing that I think is pretty new to this Luigi's Mansion where you like launch yourself up vertically but it isn't a jump you can't move around it's just to move straight up and then back down and you kind of use this to avoid shock waves or it kind of does this blast shock, shock wave around yourself so it kind of disrupts the ghost that way as well. As far as the combat goes, especially just the generic ghost, I felt like it was too easy for me. Even when you suck up a ghost, you have this little ground pound slam that you can uh, slam ghosts around you, and this also damages nearby ghosts. It was just kind of easy. Um, as near Once you got near to the end of the game, it did take a little more of thought uh, but it was still pretty easy as far as the generic ghost goes. The highlight in the combat themselves are the bosses. Now, each of these floors to this hotel have a unique theme to them, which I thought was pretty fun. I'm not sure what kind of hotel would have these weird themes, like one floor is like this Egyptian theme where there's sand all over the place, and I get from a gameplay perspective why this would be. It's it's fun to mix things up. I thought they were pretty creative in terms of their themes. It mixed up the gameplay a lot. It wasn't just a generic like ice, lava, jungle theme. They, they went in fun directions, like one floor was like a Hollywood floor the Egyptian floor that I said one was like the, the natural museum with full of these dinosaur fossils I I feel like some of the floors could have been fleshed out a little bit because some of them were strictly like just a boss it wasn't just exploring rooms you went straight to the boss and that was it and I kind of wish that they were were fleshed out and lengthened especially that natural history museum floor I thought was really fun and that was really just a boss and that's it the bosses themselves though are very fun and and they they I like the designs of the bosses themselves it was pro definitely the highlight in terms of combat and uh, especially near the end some of the bosses were a little more thought-provoking and, and more challenging which I definitely appreciate now aside from the combat there is also the puzzle element and for the most part this worked but quite often I would just kind of get stuck not because I thought that the puzzles themselves were clever or thought-provoking but I felt like it was not like I would just wander around like what the heck do I do and I would just get stuck and it wasn't clearly laid out on what you should do now as far as the puzzles go it should be like as soon as I solve the puzzle I should feel oh that was clever the way that they did that but most of the time it's just like how was I supposed to know I was supposed to do that as far as the puzzles go a lot of these puzzles revolve around the third unique thing about this Luigi's Mansion game it is Gooigi and this is where I feel like the two-player puzzle element really comes into play I felt like this game was perfectly tailored for two players and uh, it did hinder the first player experience because you would have to toggle between playing as Luigi and Gooigi Gooigi has a couple of advantages over Luigi like he can go through spikes and bars so this is kind of like the the uh, little brother mode you know where it 
if Guiji dies, you can just resummon him again. It's no big deal. This is where the uh, little kid would play, and then maybe the more experienced gamer would play as actual Luigi. Guiji cannot go into water, though. He will dissolve that in that aspect. So you kind of have to do some puzzle-solving elements by toggling between Guiji and Luigi. And I felt like this might have played a little more fluently if I was playing with another player. Now, this is all done through the aid of EGAD, this weird eccentric scientist and he is the one that equips you with your vacuum and he will kind of give you some direction if you're being stuck via the virtual boo instead of the virtual boy. I know other Luigi Mansion games have you interacting with old Nintendo objects to talk to EGAD. Like one is I think a Game Boy and then one is a DS and you use these objects to interact with him. This one you just put on a virtual boy to talk with him and it has that whole virtual boy red aesthetic whenever he puts it on which I, I thought was a fun touch and it was a fun little callback to some of Nintendo's past but EGAD will contact you through this virtual boo to give you a little bit of help if you are getting stuck on one of these puzzles and you, you just don't know what the heck you're supposed to do sometimes you would encounter a boss and you can't quite pick up on some of the cues in order to defeat this boss eventually he will help you sometimes I felt like this was very much appreciated but other times like I'm just exploring I'm not really progressing right now I'm just trying to get some of the collectibles we'll go into that in a, in just a second but uh, if I'm just going for these collectibles sometimes EGAD will bug you because he thinks you're being stuck on a puzzle and it's just like no go away I don't need help right now I'll come to you when I need help which is also an option through the virtual boo menu you can just straight up ask EGAD for help but yeah sometimes I'm just wanting to explore I wanting to suck up objects with my vacuum I want to get money and this game has a ton of cash money in it you are exploring this hotel and you are sucking up dollar bills and coins and pearls and in the bottom corner is this number keeping track of your currency this racks up a ton of cash Luigi is flush with cash baby he's sucking it all up and what can you do with money I feel like the money itself is actually pretty useless you can go to EGAD's laboratory and you can spend this money on three separate things one is a extra life so if Luigi dies you can use this golden bone and Polter Pup will come and heal you now I felt like this was actually pretty useless because if you die it's a game over screen but it just checkpoints you right outside where you died so I felt like that was pretty useless in terms of money it, I guess if you didn't want to sit through a whole game over screen you would buy some of this the other two are to help you find collectibles so there are two collectibles in this game outside of money that is one are booze hidden throughout the hotel this kind of gives you some incentive to backtrack to previous floors that you've been on in order to find these booze so capture all those that's one collectible another one are a set amount of gems hidden on each floor and this is additional little puzzle element that you can look out for um, as you are exploring the floors you can get these gems gems and there are theme gems depending on which floor you're on so let's say you go to the whole gym floor the gems themselves might be in the shape of dumbbells and I initially thought that I would have to backtrack to get these gems because I thought that Luigi's Mansion kind of worked like a metroidvania in some aspects I thought I would be unlocking powers as I progress through the game and then I would have to backtrack using those new powers but once you get into about a fifth of the game you're set with your tool set the whole time like it's you're not gonna get anything new what you have is what you get and so technically during each playthrough during each floor you should be able to get all of the gems that you possibly can and where I'm going with all this uh, collectible thing is when you are in the store themselves you can get little indicators that show where these booze and these gems are located but if you aren't interested in that or if you just want to look up this stuff online this makes spending money quite useless um, the only purpose outside of the shop for your money is your ending rank and this will show a little something I, I won't go into it here but um, I got a rank B so I could potentially get more money in my bank and I would get a rank A at the end of the game but that's pretty much it the only other uh, thing outside of that rank is it's it's fun to shop and it's fun to just suck up a ton of dollar bills I guess it's it's satisfying it makes this little arcade noise it's it's fun now as far as the collectibles themselves Cells. I got to the end of the game and I was kind of thinking I, I got most of the gems like I would obviously go for these gems as I 
was playing through each floor, but I didn't get all of them, and I certainly didn't get any of the boos. I got maybe, like, one or two, actually. But I thought to myself, like, mm, do I want to go back and, and look for all these gems and boos? I've been playing this game for a long time. It's actually kind of a longer game than I would expect at this point when I reached the final boss. I was about 14 or 15 hours in at this point, which is longer than I thought, but um, I was thinking about it. Do I want to spend more time looking for these gems? So I looked it up what the rewards were for these boos and these gems, and I'm not going to say it here, but I thought, yeah, I'm, I'm good at this point. So I just went straight to the boss. I didn't 100% complete this game, but for you completionists out there, it might be fun to puzzle out where some of these gems are hidden. When you do backtrack, I kind of wish that when you cleared a room, it was cleared for good. But as you are backtracking through these floors, trying to get these collectibles if you want, enemies will repopulate the room. And I don't, for some reason, I didn't like that. I liked it just being like, okay, hey, this room is done for good. I've completed this room. No more ghosts. I can explore at my own content. But I didn't like that they respond. And you don't have a whole lot of incentive in combat if your progress isn't being blocked. You can just run straight through these ghosts to go to the room that you want to. So there's not, you know, there's just not that much of an incentive to do this combat, especially since it's not even that fun, in my opinion. There are some fun things to take away from this game. Like I said, I love to vacuum up all the little objects. I like to rack up my money. Um, I do like the characters themselves, especially Egad and Pulcher Pup. I love Pulcher Pup, such a good boy. My significant other, she was watching me one time and she's like, why doesn't Pulcher Pup have ears? I don't like that he doesn't have ears and uh, ever since then I, I keep looking at Pulcher Pup's design and I'm like yeah why doesn't he have ears he'd be he'd be cuter if he did but I still really really enjoy Pulcher Pup probably one of the better Nintendo dogs definitely better than Poochie for sure I can recognize that it is a good game and enjoyable and probably really fun for a lot of people it's just not really my kind of uh game I guess I did beat it and I'm glad that I did play through it and beat it and now that it's in my collection. I, I, I like it and uh, I just wish that I liked it as much as other people did and you know what that's the beauty of you know video games and, and media as a whole not everything is going to be for everyone and we can just you know I'm happy for the people that did get Luigi's Mansion 3 as far as my own personal score I think I will give this game a 3 out of 5 I, I recognize it is a good game well guys that's it for me and that's it for the spooked series for 2021 I wish you all a happy happy Halloween let me know if you have any questions or comments about Luigi's Mansion or Luigi's Mansion 3. What are you going to do for Halloween? I hope you really enjoyed this spooked series. I will definitely continue it in 2022. As for me, though, I'll see you guys in November. Bye!